All right, that's right. It's a Mackie and Judd takeover of Cluster Fun here. Danny Cunningham is out at uh, Wolves Summer League media stuff, so we're hijacking this. And Judd is going to eat his breakfast live on Cluster Fun right now. In I'm fact, loving my breakfast, Phil. We're not even going to talk. We're just going to watch Judd eat a sandwich on Cluster Fun right now. This is no ordinary sandwich. A classic McMuffin. Did okay. you op, did you opt for? Oh, so it's just okay. It's the it's the not egg the sausage white? McMuffin. It's the egg McMuffin. The e egg white is gone. No longer an option. So they realize that you know what? I can't what? be healthy. But here's the thing: like, if you're McDonald's, don't spread yourself thin. <laughs> don't offer salads. Some friendly advice: don't offer egg whites. If I'm going to McDonald's, I'm good with. I'm I'm signing yeah. up for what I'm signing up for. But don't you want to feel good about yourself? Like the egg white made gave me a false <laughs> sense of security. <laughs> well, you used to. It made me feel good about my body. I remember uh, when we used to do Mackie and Judd McDonald's ads. Yep. You did one for the gra like the grass fed burgers, and you did sixty seconds on health. Just how like you're gonna have a six pack now? Health, yes, <laughs> I was trying to sell the health angle. And even McDonald's is like, I mean, thanks for the publicity, but nah, eh, I don't think we. And need then that. they took it all away. <laughs> Um, all right, I want to ask you, we dove into some of this on Mackie and Judd with yep. Rami yesterday. So we've been talking so much about Timberwolves free agency and uh, the 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 D'Angelo Russell buzzkill. But meanwhile, around the same timeline, NHL free agency opened up and the Minnesota Wild signed Matt Zuccarello yep. to a multi-year deal. He's locked up until he's 37 years old. He's 32 years old now. Yep. And, um, and I just, I guess I want to know, after you've slept on this for a day or two, have your thoughts changed about the Wilds' decision to add established veteran players to an established veteran roster? Absolutely not, because I'm confused as to what they're doing. I, I mean, this is the has been my, my platform on Paul Fenton and the Wild now for a month and a half. I don't get it. Um, when Leopold hired Fenton and talked about tweaks, we all sort of like winked and were like, yeah, right, tweaks. Now, I get that there are players on that roster who currently can't be moved, but if I'm the Wild... Why are you worried about 2019-20? I get the season ticket sales have slowed down. I, I get the business side of things. But don't you want to, I mean, isn't the the threshold now in sports to build for long-term success? Like, aren't we past the, let's try and make the playoffs next year and win a Stanley Cup or a World Series title? Yeah, I almost feel like if you, so I, I'm with you, I think bottoming out would be the best thing for the franchise. It's hard to bottom out when you still have Zach Parisi, Ryan Suter, and a couple other guys who are, they're not what they were three years ago, but yep. they're still, they're good enough yep. to, so that you're not going to be the, you're not going to be a 15 win team in 2019-20. Right. right. So you're in a, you're in a tough spot and that you can't really bottom out, but if you could hit the magic button, the easy button, and just bottom out, I think it's more sports socially acceptable to, if you're upfront with your fans and Absolutely. you say, we're, in fact, the the 76ers went a step further. They told their fans, we're going to be bad. Yep. And they branded it, trust the process. And I think they had t-shirts. I mean, it was like Absolutely. the brand of the team was, we're going to be bad, trust the process. And when it's all said and done, we're going to have a multi-year playoff run of some kind. The Rangers sent a letter to their fans two years back now, basically saying, here's what we're doing. We're not trying right now. And they spelled out and the entire above plan. 500. And guess what? They, they got Panarin yesterday. They, they got... Oh, I thought you meant the Texas Rangers. No. I got The you. New York Rangers. Okay. But they got lucky in the lottery and got the second pick. The point being is, that's what teams do now. And I think fans... I think you're right. I don't think fans are like, oh, you're going to stink and it's bad. They're like, oh, I sort of get this. Yeah. Now, my problem with the Wild is this. Because you're, you're right. Parisi, Suter... Let's go down that Over entire the list to Dumba. He scores. So, so you've got some decent players. But forward-wise, what I would do, top six, I'd play my kids next year. Find yeah. out. Tell Koivu, your third, uh, go stall, second or third line. Koivu, third or fourth line. Mm -hmm. Parisi, third line. And basically say, guys, you're stuck here. Like, we can't move you. Yeah. But, but we're also not, um, your time to probably win a cup is passed as well. So the compromise is we're going to play you not as much as you, you'd like, but ultimately our top six, we need to find out. Because in 2019-20, the Wilds' <clears throat> motto should be, Phil, it doesn't matter. We're yeah. trying to find out. If they told the fans tomorrow, all right, we went big six years ago. If Craig Leopold wrote a letter to the fans and said, we went big six years ago. Yep. It was, it was a good run of playoff uh, appearances, regular season success, the Parisi suitor, in fact... 
Uh, it's it's the is it the seven or six year anniversary this week? Seven year anniversary this week? Two thousand twelve. Yeah. So seven seven years. Seven years. On July fourth. And uh, it, it, it didn't peak the way that we wanted. We thought we would win a Stanley Cup championship. And so, moving forward, we're not going to be good anymore. And I don't know how you would phrase that, but you can literally say, year, though. we're going to go through a period of adjustment, if you want to call it that way. Yep. Hashtag period of adjustment. Yes. Dave Winfield used to call slumps periods of statistical adjustments. Yes. And um, we, we still want you to come on out. There's plenty of great things to do and eat and drink at the Excel Energy Center. I don't think there'd be a ton of backlash. I think fans would understand, yeah, all right, didn't work out the way that we wanted it to, but um, now would they fill the arena with 20,000 people every night? Maybe not, but would you be better in three years or five years if you got the number two or number one overall pick sometime in that window? Absolutely. Yes. And and an honest rebuild right now, Phil, takes how long? It's no longer five years. Like if you do it right- In hockey? If you do it right and, and you get any luck in the lottery, how quick, if you draft an 18 year old stud, he could be your best, if, if he clicks, he could be, he could be your, your best, best players personally. like the first or second right. year, right? But there's nothing worse in sports now than, than trying to make a playoffs as a low seed and doing that, yeah. not getting good draft picks, but then you tread water for how long? So my thing is the Twins. Look at the Twins. When the Twins got the right idea, now for years they didn't have it. Yeah. But when, when Falvey and Levine came here, and you think about the tracks that they put this team on, it's been really quick. Yeah. And uh, the, the Twins the, the twins had a tough, t- I would say a tougher situation because they just built a new ballpark. Yep. And one year after they built the new ballpark, it was like, oh, no. I love your point, though. You know what? Go back and say, seven years ago, we took as big a swing in this town as you, you could possibly take. We will take more swings. Exactly. And you, you could, yeah, they like, should why not? Us, it should be the Mackey and Because it's a great idea. PR and then fans are like, oh, you, you know what? You did. July 4th, 2012 is the greatest free agency day in the history of sports in this town. Yeah. It just didn't work. And even even if it didn't work on the level that they thought, it was the right move. Yes. It put a ton of energy into the building. Yes. And um, and I'm guessing that they, they they made enough money going to a couple second rounds where, I don't know if, I, I'm guessing Craig Leopold didn't take too big of a bath financially on, on it was uh, the right move. bloating the roster like that. So, are you going to finish your sandwich? That's a good sandwich, yeah. Uh, oh, we'll, wait, wait, though. Before we're done. The Wolves. That's as mad our show yesterday. <laughs> That's as mad as I've actively seen you during a show. This has to go back. It was probably some golfer yeah. stuff. I had. Uh, How are you doing today? I had. I, I I I think I said this maybe a week and a half ago on on the show. I had mentally committed myself to a five year window of D'Angelo Russell and Carl Anthony Towns. I was there. I was there in my head. I had already bought the D'Angelo Russell jersey in my mind. I was there. And so I was I was more angry on Sunday night. It was more like how quickly it was all the rug was pulled out so quickly because the whole week leading up was slow cook rumors. Oh, there there's rumors about D'Angelo. Oh, Carl Anthony Towns is posting on his Instagram account. Absolutely. Oh, they're like posting about each other. And then the Wolves land the first meeting with D'Angelo Russell. I, I, I don't know if you guys saw the videos that he, uh, D'Angelo Russell is posting like videos of him in a helicopter. Was that him with the wolves in a helicopter? Yes. That was him with the wolves? Seth knows. So now, like, the video of him in a helicopter with the Timberwolves yeah. is That's circulating. That's referring to on, on the show, yeah. But I didn't know he posted the videos. Okay. And, and I, they got I just retweeted saw him this by morning. social media Seth, yes. Um, but, like, the whole week was this lead-up to... And then all the things that needed to happen on Sunday, all the dominoes that had to fall, KD and Kyrie to the yeah. Nets, everything fall. Right. And, <laughs> and then like there was one tweet by Sham. So like so I, I I think myself and Wolves fans were like, this is happening. Yep. This is for sure happening. And then Shams around eight or nine o'clock at night sends out, actually the Warriors are sniffing around here. And it was like, oh, okay, that's okay. They're sniffing around. The, the Lakers are sniffing around. They're kicking the garbage cans. Oh, yeah, they're just, You're like, like, what's that noise outside? Go check on that yeah. noise. It's nothing. They're sniffing around, but if but if Norman but Bates. if D'Angelo wants to play for the Wolves, like it'll get done. He'll, it'll just be that they'll facilitate it for him, right? Right. And I, it must have been three minutes after the Shams tweet, like, oh, the the Warriors are sniffing around. It was like Woj bomb. Shams comes in again. Oh, it's actually a done deal. Sorry, sorry, Timberwolves. Yep, you're just Wah-wah. out. You're just dead. Wiley Coyote, same thing every time. So. I'm better today. I feel Are you? better today. Well, and then the, no. the subsequent trades that the Wolves made to help to help Golden State facilitate <laughs> the uh, D'Angelo deal in Golden State. I thought Shabazz was. Napier. 
And after yeah. reading and talking to smarter people than me, the Dane Moores, uh, the John Krasinski's, the Danny Cunningham's, uh, I do like the Jordan Bell signing, yeah. but not as like your signing. You're right. You know, not as like if we all thought D'Angelo Russell was right. going to be the signing and then it's Jordan Bell. Jordan Bell could be a good rotation player, some upside. And it sounds like uh, the two pieces they're getting from the Nets are just like movable things or assets that they can acquire. Right. So they're they're clearly setting up for something else, but I don't know if there's going to be a big splash this summer. So to go from what we thought a few weeks ago to what is real now yep. is classic Timberwolves. Guess what? Trust the process. Man. I don't know if I Or trust. just give up and pick a new NBA <laughs> team finally. I do trust Gerson Rosas's process, but it might it, we thought it was going to be a magic pill, and I think and he now did it's, too. Now it's going to be. I think he thought I'm, I'm going to come years. in and I'm going to accomplish yeah. this, and then he learned working for the Timberwolves was never easy. Yep. Glenn Taylor nails the hire, nails the front office for the first time. Yep. For the first time uh, since the two Flip Saunders hires that he made. Yep. And instead of a magic pill overnight, it's the Andrew Wiggins contract that Glenn Taylor initiated in the first place. Looked, that listen, Andrew looked at Glenn and said, "I want this." Maybe that's Plan B. Andrew, I need you to look me in the eye again and tell me you're not going to shoot 20-foot jump shots anymore with a hand in your face. Uh, all right, we're going to let Judd finish all his right. sandwich. That's been Cluster Fun. Danny Cunningham will be back. I don't think he's back tomorrow, but he'll be back at some point hosting Cluster Fun. But uh, right. we've hijacked it today. Mackie and Judd with Rami, 4 to 6 o'clock on Score North and the Score North mobile app. Thank you guys for uh, hanging out with us.